Hello and welcome to Nursing Emergencies Thyroid Storm. This is part of the Nursing Emergencies program. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy, and I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's take a look at thyroid storm. First, a review of our thyroid hormones and the function that the thyroid gland has in the body. In order to release the hormones of the thyroid, we need to have a stimulus coming from the hypothalamus, that's thyroid regulating hormone that is released. This thyroid regulating hormone or thyroid releasing hormone then stimulates the pituitary to release thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone then stimulates the thyroid to produce T3, T4, and calcitonin. So these are the three major hormones made by the thyroid gland. What happens when a patient has thyroid storm is that we have a situation where we have the overproduction of T3 and T4. Going back to our previous diagram, you notice that there is also the red arrows, a negative feedback inhibition that is part of this process. So as that patient starts to warm up or as the metabolism starts to increase, there's going to be a negative feedback that tells the hypothalamus and the pituitary to stop releasing thyroid releasing hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone. Thus, there will be less stimulation of the thyroid and therefore we'll have a decrease in our T3, T4 and calcitonin that are being produced. In patients who have thyroid storm, we have the overproduction of these hormones. Typically, this is in someone who has an untreated hyperthyroidism. Someone with an untreated hyperthyroidism either doesn't know that they have hyperthyroidism, and therefore it's untreated, or they know they have it, but they're not treating it for some reason. Maybe they ran out of their medications or whatever the case may be. We also have precipitating factors that would stimulate this. So a patient may have hyperthyroidism that is untreated, and normally it's not a big problem for them. They're not having a lot of symptoms. However, we add in some infection, surgery, trauma, pregnancy, embolism, adrenergic drugs, DKA, so all of those things that we see in the hospital. So our hospitalized patients are going to be at high risk for developing thyroid storm if they have this underlying untreated hyperthyroidism. The presentation will be the state of having hyperthyroidism. In other words, the overproduction of T3 and T4. T3 is the primary metabolic hormone in the body, so it is being produced in order to increase our metabolism. T4 is a storage type of a hormone, so it's stored out in the tissues. It sits out there waiting for when we're going to need to use it. So our presentation will be a fever, and this fever could be very high, even in excess of 40 degrees Celsius. Tachycardia, atrial fibrillation because of the stimulation of the heart, hypertension for the same reason with a wide pulse pressure. Our systolic pressure will be going up. Our diastolic pressure may be remaining fairly low. We're not having as much vasoconstriction as we are having increases in cardiac stimulation and therefore an increase in cardiac output. Agitation, seizures, coma, so you see that neurologic stimulation that's occurring there. Hepatomegaly, hypotension, shock, and death will eventually occur as we start to run out of glucose. So this increase in metabolism is going to cause the patient to be using up lots and lots of glucose. As we use up that glucose in the brain, what can happen is we end up in the hypotension, shock, and death state. So this is what we should be looking for. You have a patient who has hyperthyroidism and the patient is in thyroid storm. You see all of these storm type of presentation symptoms, but be watching for when that blood pressure starts coming back down and the patient then may develop shock and then die. 20 to 30% mortality, so the mortality is really very high. 
probably because this happens a lot in the patient's home and they never be, are able to get to the hospital or they get to the hospital too late in order to have appropriate treatment. We can be watching for it in our patients in a hospital, though, by watching their vital signs. I mean, look at the presentation, fever, tachycardia. So we're going to notice those things fairly quickly. On our labs, we would expect to see a decrease in the thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay, so the pituitary is saying, hey, knock it off. We've got enough T3. We don't need any more. Remember, there was that negative feedback loop part two. A normal T4. So T4 may not be produced in excess in this case. Uh, T4 also goes into storage. Remember, it's a kind of a storage hormone. So that's more likely to stay in a storage state instead of being mobilized. T3 is our mobilized thyroid hormone. So that's out in the bloodstream, and that is likely to be high. In addition, we may also see an increase in our liver function tests. So this is, and you may have heard of this before, the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid access. In other words, this is your negative feedback loop. So we have the hypothalamus making our thyroid releasing hormone, and then our pituitary, our thyroid stimulating hormone, and then we have our thyroid producing the T3 and T4. Then it's going to stimulate the hypothalamus to start turning this back down. So as T3 and T4 start to elevate, we're going to start to dial this back down again so that we have this nice, constant flow of T3 and T4 that is appropriate for what activity you're doing at the current time. So our prompt action for thyroid storm will be balance our ventilation perfusion train. So balance our perfusion and ventilation by the amount of oxygen that is being used. So we're going to have a severe increase in our oxygen consumption, and therefore we'd want to make sure that we are increasing the available oxygen that is getting to the tissues. IV fluids preferably some with dextrose. Remember, again, we're using up the glucose in the brain, so we do want to have that extra dextrose available. Beta blockers may be helpful. We could block some of the sympathetic stimulation that may be adding to hypertension and tachycardia. PTU and the iodine, these are going to be some of the common pieces that are going to be necessary for treatment. Sodium iodine, corticosteroids may be helpful. Correcting our fluid and electrolyte imbalances. So this is going to be really important. With the hypertension, the tachycardia is going to put additional pressure on the kidney. The kidney is going to respond by dumping off fluid. Electrolytes obviously follow. And then the patient could end up with a fluid and electrolyte imbalance. Control the fever. We don't want that fever getting out of hand. So we may have to use cooling blankets and, and such in order to try to decrease the temperature. Ultimately, though, the only real treatment for this is going to be surgical ablation of the thyroid. Here we're seeing a patient who has a very large goiter, which could be the result of hyperthyroidism. It, goiters also occur in hypothyroidism. Well, thank you for joining me for Nursing Emergencies Thyroid Storm. Let's continue in the Nursing Emergencies program. Until next time.